really proud of our team. You know, first off, give a lot of credit to UCLA. I mean, I had a ton of respect for Coach Cronin going all the way back to when I was a high school coach and played against him twice now. His teams are always tough, well-prepared, hard knows they were that tonight. We, you know, we weren't good enough to beat them tonight. They were better. They hit some tough shots, you know, give a lot of credit to their players too. I mean, shoot, Hakez and Bernard were, were great. You know, I thought Campbell was good. You know, they stepped the line, made their free throws and got stops when they needed to. You know, they, they could have definitely, uh, you know, that we had all the momentum going into overtime. They could have folded. They didn't. They came out, kind of punched us in the mouth to start overtime. And just give a lot of credit to UCLA as far as our guys go. You know, I, I say it's a historic season. I don't want them to walk out of this locker room with their heads down. You know, you can make the argument one of the best, if not the best, Alabama basketball teams in history. I mean, won the SEC regular season, the tournament. Uh I mean, there's all kinds of records that, you know, that were taking place. I, you know, I, these seniors, you know, you think about Petty, Reese, Herb Jones, what they've meant to the program. You know, they they didn't have to stick around and be coached by a guy that didn't recruit them. They didn't have to buy into everything we were trying to sell. They did. You know, Tyler Barnes, a walk-on, he's one of the Best kids I've ever met. I love him. He was huge for the culture of this program. He added in a kid like Jordan Bruner, who turned down a lot of really good basketball programs to come try to change Alabama basketball. And he, he did that. He helped our culture a lot. So you talk about those five seniors and couldn't be happier for those guys for what we were able to do their senior year. You know, and the guys that are underclassmen and be back, you know, we've – Let's not forget this feeling. We were a lot better team than this, and you got you got to be great every every night in March. You know, or it's a one game elimination tournament. The best team doesn't always win. You know, the team that plays best that night wins, but it's not always the best team. So, really happy with uh, the season. Really proud of the guys. Really disappointed with tonight. Coach, congratulations on that great season, and again, appreciate your time here. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Our first question is from Cecil Hurt with the Tuscaloosa News. Cecil, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, coach, slow start to the game, slow start to the overtime. Uh, anything that you noticed that, that caused that and, and how were you all able to to overcome it in the game and then um, couldn't do it in the overtime? It's a good question. You know, I, the slow start to the game, you know, I don't know. I mean, we, we actually, I mean, we were in the game for a while. I thought it was the close to the first half. Yeah, it last really hurt. Am I good? Everybody, I, is there more to the question? Okay. Sorry, Coach. Yeah, please, please continue. I think that was the background noise. Oh, yeah. No, I, I didn't think the start to the game was off. It wasn't our best, obviously, but you know, it was a little slow. But we, you know, we were able to. It's a pretty tight first half. I thought the close of the first half was awful. All right, I think they ended the first half on an eighteen to four run after we were up 25-22. So I thought we closed the first half poorly. I thought we opened the second half really ready to go. You know, we put Reese in there, I, you know, for whatever reason, I'd only gotten him just over three minutes in the first half, which I didn't like, you know, I, he's been a great kid. I, I mean, I cannot say enough about Reese's character as a senior this year. So we thought he could give us a lift. He did. We were good early in the second half with him in there, you know, nothing against anybody else, but I just, I wanted to give him a shot. And I thought he, I thought he'd played well in those three minutes and they were playing small. We knew they, they would start Riley. So we started Reese. That's a better matchup for him. And then the, the start to the overtime, I, you know, we give up that three out of the gate. I didn't think we needed the help. We did. And that's a tough one. You know, and then we they scored the second time. And all of a sudden, I mean, it just kind of built up. I thought we, you know, we answered a little bit there to cut it. I think we cut it from seven to four maybe. I, I and just couldn't get the stops when we needed. So, you know, I, I don't have an answer for why it didn't go well in overtime, I, you know. I don't know if I'm even going to watch this game, to be honest with you. It's not, uh, it was not one of our better games, I'm sure, at some point in the next 
week. Maybe I'll sit down and watch it. I'm not watching it tonight. I can guarantee you that, though. Our next question will come from Tyler Martin with Bama Central. Tyler, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Coach. Congrats on the great season. Um, just wanted to ask about the free throws, 11 to 25. Did you think that was a mental thing? What do you think was the issue with the free throw shooting tonight? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I to me, free throws are always a mental thing. I mean, it, you're, it's the same distance. It's there, There's zero variables in free throws other than the pressure you put on yourself mentally. I mean, I always tell our guys, turn yourself into a robot at the free throw line. It's the same thing. You do the same routine every time. So, yeah, and I, why it became a mental thing. You know, I don't know if some early misses by some guys made other guys start thinking about it. I don't have the answer to that. And it's disappointing because, you know, if we make them, we win the game. And it, it hurts to lose a game knowing if you make free throws, you win. I mean, you know, you look, I mean, obviously – you know, we, we both shot 25 free throws. They made 20 and we made 11. So, you know, you needed one more free throw in regulation to win it, but it's tough. I mean, it's the game of basketball. Got to make them. And, you know, we put a big point emphasis on guys making them. I thought we had a lot of guys improve dramatically. You know, Herb Jones is a great free throw shooter all year. Uh, he put a ton of time in all off season, all year really in the gym. One of, you know, he's a good free throw shooter. Didn't happen to make him tonight. So, you know, nothing to hang his head about. I mean, it happens. It's sports. And so, you know, he wasn't the only one. I think we only had two guys shoot over 50%. I think, like, Primo and Petty, the only two guys that shot over 50%. We've had guys that made him at a pretty high level all year just didn't make him tonight for whatever reason. Time. Tyler, thanks for your question. Next, we'll go to Steve Moulton with WZZN. Steve, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville. Congratulations on a fantastic year. I I've got a couple, if I could. A at the end of regulation, was uh, Reese's shot the one that you were wanting? A and then my second question to you, Coach, is ultimately, how are you going to remember this team? I mean, I – Quinterly had uh, four options, really three. Herb took it out with that amount of time. It was it was going to – four, including himself. I mean, you know, if he had to open three himself, he could have taken it. He's made great decisions for us all year. I think Quinterly's – you know, he's been an unbelievable point guard. You know, we – um he was great for us. I mean, let us in scoring. You know, he's good. He found the right guy. Or he's, he's had a pension for hitting big shots. I mean, I kind of made the statement before. I mean, we looked at – 12 games last year, I think 11 of them were one or two possession games. We threw that Kentucky game in. We looked at the last six minutes of all those games, and Reese had been one of the guys making big shots at the end of close games for us last year. I think he's got it in him. There's a reason he was in the game at the end. He hit another big shot. He, you know, he hit big shot. He was five of seven from three coming into the, uh, you know, in the tournament games. So he ends up, what did he go, one of two? He ends up six of nine from three in the NCAA tournament. So the biggest games of the year for him, he showed up big. I'm um, really proud of him, proud of his character, proud of everything he's become. And, uh, you know, I'm glad he hit the three. But, you know, it, he was, it was either Petty, Keon Ellis, or uh, Reese were kind of JQ's three options there, and he found the right, right guy. And then how will I remember this team? I remember it as a team that changed uh, the entire culture of Alabama basketball expectation levels are, are drastically different. Recruiting's different. People want to come here and play for Alabama basketball. Uh, people think about Alabama basketball way different. It, you know, I'm, I told our guys, I'm going to be talking about this team for the next 30 years I'm coaching. This is a, an unbelievable team with a bunch of high character kids that stepped up to the challenge and changed the entire narrative of Alabama basketball. Those three seniors from the state of Alabama, uh, they're going to go down in Alabama basketball history. You know, Petty Jones and Reese couldn't be more proud of them. And, you know, I already talked about the, the other two seniors that, that were included with those two. So that's how I'm going to remember them. Be best team I've coached. I mean, I had some tough, hard nose. I, I love my Buffalo teams, but this team was tough, hard nose with a lot of talent. Fifth in the country. Pretty good. So proud of them. W wish I was still coaching them for another week or week and a half, whatever it would have been, but wasn't meant to be.
Time for a couple of final questions. Next, we'll go to Scott Griffin. Scott, you can unmute yourself. Please share where you're from and ask your question. Scott Griffin, ABC 3340. Nate, it, it's weird. to It's hard to put a finger on this thing because it's I don't think you guys were rushed necessarily, just not relaxed maybe or something. Even in, even in the runs, it just didn't – it wasn't a flow or something. Is that the feeling you got tonight? I mean, I don't, I don't think it helped with Herb's foul trouble out of the gate. We kind of got out of the flow a little bit. We rely a lot on him. Offense runs through him. You know, two charges in the first two possessions on offense kind of took him out of rhythm a little bit. You know, that may have been it. They did a good job. I mean, you look at our assist uh, numbers. We had nine assists, 14 turnovers. That's not how we play. You know, you look at how we play, you're usually the other way when we're good on offense. So, you know, with the ball maybe didn't move, but you got to give a lot of credit to UCLA, too. They had a good game plan. And, you know, when you get down, you play a little different. But I think our, our guys showed a lot of character, a lot of resilience coming back. I mean, we had a lead uh, – uh, we had a lead at some point there in the second half. I think what we – up. I think we were up eight there in the first half, I remember. And then we were, we were up four, four, six in the second half. So if I remember right, I, I don't know for sure. But I, yeah, I, I mean, what, look, man, when, I mean, you look at UCLA's tempo, they're one of the slowest teams in the country. They, they try to muck things up a little bit, make it different. We knew that they were going to do that. Uh, you know, well, you can't speed them up on offense without gambling a lot on defense. We, we're not a gambling team. I mean, we're third in the country in defensive efficiency coming into this game. We're a good defensive team. We just, you know, they hit some tough shots. We didn't do as good a job as we needed to during parts of the game. And, you know, I we I thought our coaches did a good job getting guys ready to play. Maybe, maybe, you know, I could have made a few different decisions personnel-wise. I mean, these games are not easy to win. They're hard games to win and give our players a lot of credit, give our assistant coach a lot of credit. It wasn't meant to be tonight. And finally, uh, we'll go to Cecil Hurt. Cecil, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, my question got asked. Somebody else can have the last one. Okay, thank you for that, Cecil. Finally, we'll go to Carter Hill with the fifth quarter. Carter, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Yeah, Coach, Carter Hill with fifth quarter. Congratulations on a fantastic season. You talked about it in your opener a little bit about remembering this feeling. How much fuel does this give you all to be back on the stage next season? And back to the shot at the end of regulation, did you anticipate UCLA to foul you all in the inbound? Yeah, I was thinking they might try to foul us. You know, I don't know what his philosophy is on that, but glad he didn't foul us, obviously. Um, and what was, I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question again? Apologize, Carter. No, no, you're good. Uh, you had talked about this feeling in, oh, yeah. yeah, remembering this feeling in the opener. Uh, how much fuel does this give you all to get back on the stage this uh, next year? I mean, look, we got some really talented players that will be back next year. Quinterly, Shackelford, Primo. You know, Juwan Gary's been big for us. I mean, you kind of go down the list. I mean, Keon Ellis was huge for us late in the year. You know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, we had kids sitting out and Chiku. There's guys that played well. We've got some really big time recruits coming in. I think, you know, the, the future of Alabama basketball is in a great spot. I, I would hope. I mean, as a coach, it's going to motivate me. We got to figure out what to do better. Like, I mean, I, I, there's obviously stuff I could have done better in this game, and I want to figure it out. So at some point, I'll watch the game as a staff. We'll go down and evaluate it once I get to that point when I'm ready to watch it. But, you know, we, we can do better. I thought we made drastic improvements from year one to year two. We need to make more improvements from year two to year three. We're going to miss these seniors in a huge way. I mean, they're, they're great. I mean, Petty and Herb Reese, I mean, Bruner, some of maybe four best senior group in a long time in Alabama basketball history. So we're going to miss them a lot. But, yeah, I, I hope losing motivates those guys that are returning. I mean, we didn't – some of them didn't play very well. I mean, but it, it's sports. And, you know, in sports, sometimes you need a little motivation in the offseason. Hopefully it gives it to them. I mean, I, I told them not to hang their heads, but I'm sure that knowing these guys, they're very competitive. They want to get better, and they'll use it for motivation, I'm sure, as the coaching staff will.